Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and the visionary of the Valder Beebe show, God Talk. Some people talk to God and others believe that God talks to them. Join us in conversation with authors, religious clergy, metaphysicians, and regular people like you and I and God Talk. God Talk is a podcast available on FM Radio, Roku TV, and online. Subscribe at ValderBBShow.com. You can also subscribe at YouTube.com slash ValderBBShow. Join the conversation of God Talk. I'll see you there. Good day and welcome back to the Valder BB Show as I welcome my next guest, Kelly Anderson. She's here to tell us that we may be a little bit surprised at the cutting edge medical innovation that's happening right now in the community that you live in. Kelly Anderson, welcome back to welcome to the Valder BB Show, need I say. Thanks so much for having me on today. You know, you're joining us to tell the story of the private sector role in bringing science to life and bringing it to people. And I know that you're the Senior Director of Health and Drug Policy at the U.S. Chambers Global Innovative Policy Center. Boy, what a title. (laughs) It is a bit of a mouthful, yes. (laughs) What type of medical innovation is happening here in our communities? Yeah, you know, as I mentioned at the outset, I think many folks may be unaware that there's cutting edge medical research taking place right now in their own backyard. You know, my mom is an OR nurse, and even she was surprised to learn about the clinical trials that are taking place in her own hospital. And, you know, while our daily lives are still dominated by COVID-19, the innovative scientific community is relentlessly pursuing research into the next generations of treatments for diseases, whether it's coronavirus mutations or cancer or HIV. In fact, in Texas right now, there's over 31,000 clinical trials happening statewide. And what that means is, you know, it's your neighbors and your local businesses that are really helping to advance this critical research to discover new treatments for some conditions where there are none. That is, that's amazing and astounding. So how does this innovation support our local economy or does it? (laughs) It certainly does. And it's through jobs, jobs, jobs. You know, there in Texas, medical innovation directly employs over 38,000 people. And while the innovation starts in a lab, it certainly doesn't end there. Medical innovation also supports over 72,000 more jobs across the state in sectors as varied as construction, transportation, to manufacturing. So if you look at the construction space, for example, construction projects, biotech construction projects, support billions of dollars of infrastructure investments. And, you know, those jobs employ building trades professionals, so folks like electricians or pipe fitters. And these are good paying jobs with great benefits packages, so that ultimately helps build healthier economies. And so that's really why the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is so committed to advancing local innovation, because it does have a really critical impact on the local economy. So all that money, and and, and it's not to dicker about the money at this point in time, because you and I, they're not listening to us, but that when Biden has put together this infrastructure uh, package, it has value, it has meaning, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the chamber has been a very vocal supporter of the infrastructure package because of the need to repair this nation's bridges and roads and the infrastructure across the entire country. So, you know, it's investments like that that we really need to ensure that, you know, we can get America on the right track to a real economic recovery. In the beginning, you spoke about the innovations to answer to my question. What's what can be done to support our local innovators? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think what we saw during the pandemic was that America's innovators really did their part to help fight it but they can't do it alone. So we're really relying on local leaders to help advance smart innovation policies. And that includes things like effective intellectual property protection and making sure that businesses and individuals receive a fair value for their innovation. And nobody needs those protections more than the small and medium-sized businesses that comprise nearly 80% of the biopharmaceutical pipeline. So that's really why the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is hoping to work with policymakers to advance a pro-innovation agenda. Because with the right laws in place, I think we can make sure that the next generation of medical technology is invented in Texas and across the U.S. and then exported to the world. 
to make sure you understand the information you're getting is, this is from behind the scenes. Kelly Anderson serves as the Senior Director of Health and Drug Policy at the U.S. Chamber's Global Innovative Policy Center. Kelly, online, is there a place for my audience to go? Because they didn't even know about that many drug trials. I know they didn't. Yeah, absolutely. So we would encourage your visit, uh, viewers to visit uschamber.com to learn a bit more. Have a great day, and thanks for stopping by the Valder Beebe Show. Thanks so much for having me. Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I host the Valder Beebe Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is My Phone Pouch. My Phone Pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.